So, uh, a common question that is posed to me uh, when people come to consult me for spine surgery is what are the exercises that I need to do? Do I really need to do any exercises when I have back pain? Can I do exercises when I have back pain? And what are those exercises? Which is safe, which is unsafe? There are lot, lots of myths and misinformation among the general public. The moment uh, the patient leaves my consultation room, he has a, a barrage of information. His attenders uh, give him advice, his neighbors, his friends, his mother, his, his, uh, his or her uh, uh, extended family. Everybody has something or the other to say. Either it is um, uh, telling them uh, use pillows when you sleep or sleep without uh, pillows. Don't sleep on your back, sleep face down, sleep, don't sleep on a mattress, sleep on the floor in, and, and so on. So uh, the same goes with even uh, exercises. People say do yoga, some people say don't do yoga. People say don't do deadlifts while there is, there is while you, you can actually do certain kind of uh, weight training exercises. Um, people don't know about planks and pilates. Uh, so those, those are all the um, uh, un, un, um, unsolicited advice as well as uncertified advice that is being given to patients who need actually a professional, uh, a professional approach and a professional uh, opinion on what, what are the exercises that they should be doing. So I thought, why don't we just talk about something very simple as exercises, even though most of our practice is about spine surgery, but 90% of uh, patients who come, 95% of patients who come to my, uh, my, uh, my clinic actually go back with the advice that they should do more exercise. So here we go. Let's have, um, let, let me share my, uh, my thoughts today. Yeah, with this uh, presentation, right. So, 80% of people go through back pain at some point in their life. And that's a fact. I myself have had back pain many times and I have treated it with exercise, back strengthening, proper posture and uh, at times with medications. So I would, uh, um, uh, there is there's nobody according to me who is spared of backache. That's primarily because we are we stand on two feet. We don't we are like all other animals on this planet. We don't stand on uh, uh, four legs. We are not quadruped. We are, we are bipedal. So um, uh, a lot of the focus, the loading happens on the mid back region, and that's why we uh, we tend to have back pain. So uh, it is the fifth most common cause for uh, physician visits according to approximately 2.3% of all physician visits. About one quarter of the US adults report low back pain lasting at least a whole day in the last three months. These are all uh, data that have been collected. 6% of US adults randomly surveyed by telephone have at least one occurrence of severe acute low back pain during a one year period with 39% of those seeking medical care for their episodes. And it's quite a disabling problem. Low back pain is one of the most chronic, most common cause of chronic or permanent impairment in adults above the age of 65. And the most common cause of activity limitation in people above the age of 45. Between 2 to 8 percent of US workforce is disabled or compensated for back pain injuries every year. And approximately 5 percent of people with back pain disability are thought to account for 75 percent of the cost associated with back pain. So, meaning to say that it's quite an expensive uh, preposition. And if the solution can be a simple uh, change in lifestyle with back strengthening exercises, then so be it. Why is back pain so common? The human spine is stressed even while we sit. Most of the time, we don't maintain a proper posture. 
no matter how much of exercise you do if you hold your spine your back in a wrong position for prolonged duration it is going to pain no matter how strong you make your spine so your posture becomes very important we we abuse our backs during our day to day activities every activity that we do every moment we are stressing the spine at the lumbar level at the lower level uh, may, may be big, uh, doing a household chores or sporting activities or leisure activities anything can lead to can lead to stress on the back and we are not servicing our back if we are not exercising we are not we are it's equal to not servicing it unless you service your back you cannot take care of your spine so fundamentally to understand what how we should go about taking care of our spine let's study a little bit of the anatomy of the spine it's pretty simple it's nothing complicated it's like our teeth there are 30 32 teeth there are 33 spinal bones so that's divided into cervical which is the uppermost part thoracic and lumbar and lowermost is the sacrum with the coccyx as you can see here the alignment of the spine has changed over many uh, millennia so from uh, primates to humans you can see that the alignment where the head was way ahead of the pelvis in uh, the primate stage gradually comes and sits right on top vertically over the pelvis that is a balanced spine and even in any individual when we are in fetal form the spine is c shaped and gradually once we develop once we learn to lift our head up we develop the cervical lordosis what we say and as we stand up we develop the curve of the lower back also and that is how we have a cervical lordosis a thoracic forward bending or kyphosis which is of a normal level and a lumbar lordosis where there is again an inward curving of the spine and and the sacrum that is the lowermost part so a perfect spine when you see has to be appearing straight when you look at it from the front and when we look at the person from the back from the side the head and the pelvis have to be in the same line that is a balanced spine and the curve of the spine has to be smooth like what you are seeing here on the screen yeah so that that is a perfect spine but not everybody's spine is perfect but it need not be abnormal small variations are acceptable it's not a, a hard and fast rule that it has to be absolutely perfect we go by certain numbers certain degrees but we don't hold it to that uh, in entirety so why is it so common the human spine is unique highly advanced functional unit which is designed not only to take loads but also to permit movement so here is a problem the spine has to bear weight of our body it's got nerves inside the spine so they, it has to protect those nerves otherwise small impacts can cause damage it is not compatible with uh, existence so the nerves have to be surrounded by the bone and also there are muscle attachments to the spine which without which we cannot propel our body forward effectively so if you see here in this image there are you see the bones and you can see the nerves the yellow thing there that's the nerve root and between two bones you have the disc which is a soft cushiony material and these are the nerves here so the disc is what you see between the two bones it's multi laminar it's got many layers to it and in the center it's got something very soft like a crab meat like material now that is the cushioning uh, shock absorber so that the vertical force the compressive force that falls on the spine gets dissipated and uh, equally distributed in the back you see between two bones you have this joint which is the facet joint and that joint the presence of this facet joints as well as the disc allows for movement of the spine but 
at the same time in a very controlled manner. It's not like the shoulder joint which gives you unlimited movement. Each motion segment, that is two bones, adjacent uh, spinal bones, allow for about 5 to 10 degrees of movement. Collectively, they have to be orchestrated to effective movement of our body. So the muscles of the uh, the muscles of the posterior lumbar spine are what we call as the dynamic supporters. There are superficial layers like the latissimus dorsi. Now that's a common uh, muscle which every person who does a little bit of exercise knows the lats, which are the wing muscles. There are the deeper muscles like the erector spinae, serratus posterior, and there are the very deep. Uh, muscles also. All these muscles need to be taken care of. It's not very complicated. Everybody has the, the information as to uh, how to do spine exercises are all out there and the, it can be easily done. There are so many YouTube videos on how you strengthen those muscles but people just need some kind of an assurance as to which are the right exercises and at what time they need to be done. So how much can the spine take? The spine can take a lot of load. It's not a very delicate structure that you can't jump, you can't twist, you can't swim, or you have to be absolutely careful, you can't lift loads. No, nature has made the spine very, uh, quite uh, efficient and extremely strong and resilient too. So if you see, uh, as the load increases, it can take a lot of load and then it goes into a phase of uh, deformation and elastic phase where the bone starts stretching the ligament starts stretching and after a particular point it starts failing and that is the failure zone we have to make sure that whatever load we carry whatever exercise we do we keep those exercises at a point in a neutral zone that is from a to b here that is the neutral zone or at most it can go from b to somewhere halfway to c where it is slightly elastic elastic zone where there is excess load but that is the zone where the bone gets stimulated to become stronger and the muscles also build so a little bit of uh, pushing the limits may be necessary to make stronger muscles so the failure strength of the spinal ligaments are also have also been analyzed and you see from these charts that the neck has very little has the least amount of strength so one has to be very careful while doing massages of the cervical spine the ligaments are much stronger in the thoracic and most strong in the lumbar spine so one has to be very careful about manipulation of the cervical spine people go for massages like ayurvedic massages or any kind of chiropractic uh, chiropractic treatment or from local to local bone centers where they do some kind of a twisting of the neck. One has to be weary of these kind of uh, uh, maneuvers. And I strongly suggest that people don't go for native treatment management of cervical spine. Only professional certified people in uh, Ayurveda or any alternative therapy, if they are professionally trained, then that is all right. But never go for manipulation of the neck. So uh, this is the motion segment. Again, as you twist and load the spine, you can see that the disc, the part between two bones, it starts bulging. So, and the nerves are here at the back. So if the disc bulges towards the back, then it can lead to back pain and lead to pain shooting down the leg. The movement also, if you see the maximum movement happens in the cervical spine. This is the neck part cervical spine in the thoracic spine where the chest wall is the movement is the least whether it is flexion extension lateral flexion or rotation of the spine and in the lumbar spine the movement is also significant but the maximum amount of rotation happens in the neck obviously our body is like a periscope you need flexibility for us to see and move around and uh, even flexion extension because we need to look at the ground as well as look at the sky. So the cervical spine has very good uh, range of movement and the joints and the disc are designed that way that it allows for more movement. So 
when you look at the spine in an x-ray or an mri it's it's quite different if you see here an x-ray shows you only the bones but the discs are not visible the nerve roots are not visible and mri scan gives us a much better idea about uh, the disc as well as the nerves as well as the joints and what is happening with the bone so if at all uh, anybody has chronic back ache and uh, or excruciating leg pain originating from the back it's better to get an mri scan and make sure that your spine is all right before you embark on any kind of a rigorous spine exercise like activities the type of back pains one has to be aware before going into back exercises and that is one is osteogenic backache where there can be disorders of the bone discogenic backache where the disc can get degenerated and lead to herniation what we commonly call as a slip disc um, spondylogenic that is from the joints of the spine what we hear as arthritis of the joints of the spine like how you develop uh, one can develop uh, arthritis of the knee or osteoarthritis of the knee similarly people can have osteoarthritis of the spine also myogenic or muscle related or many times people can have back pain purely and neck pain purely because of mental stress so as part of my uh, assessment of a patient i always look at their anxiety levels now if a person is very anxious then one has to address that anxiety component otherwise their back pain and neck pain will never go away so so, so people may feel one may feel that uh, uh, that one has a major problem but it may just be major amplification of a minor problem purely by virtue of being very anxious um yeah there is also viscerogenic where it can come from other organs sometimes people may have uh, aneurysms in the aorta or uh, renal stones which can also present as backache or urinary tract infections which can present as backache so the uh, the ones which are because of the bones which we commonly deal with are that of osteoporosis where there are weak bones infections mostly like tuberculosis there can be tumors in the spine and there can be breakages in the bone because of chronic overuse now all these one has to be aware of the reason for speaking about this is that one should be aware that if you are having these kind of diagnosis then you sh one should not be undertaking rigorous spine exercises without consulting a professional first get a proper professional opinion and only then set out on doing uh, your sp uh, spinal uh, exercises and uh, muscle building there are rare causes as i described viscerogenic vascular or psychogenic and many a times you get a good result when people have uh, with surgery when people have slip disc or lumbar canal stenosis infections tumors deformities of the spine whereas poor surgical results are noted in patients who have back pain which are which do not have all those problems like lumbar canal lumbar spondylosis or postural backache or because of osteoporosis now or like vitamin d deficiency severe vitamin d deficiency leading to osteomalacia now, even all those disorders don't improve much with surgery and one has to treat them with treat the primary cause like treat the deficiencies and then work on strengthening the back muscles so coming down to what are the effective exercises for the spine all kinds of exercises are okay like uh, a gym workout isometric workouts isotonic workouts plank exercises yoga pilates and aerobics so a whole range of them so one of the uh, common uh, statements that i make to every patient of mine is do all the spine exercises which are meant to be done on a horizontal position not the one which is done in a vertical position where one is bending forward and trying to touch the toes or doing uh, uh, positions like surya namaskaras 
if you have already have an existing problem like if you are post surgery if you have undergone a slip disc surgery where the disc has been removed or you had a fracture where a fixation has been done um, with screws and rods or if if you had a tumor where part of the spine uh, bone has been removed and reconstructed in such situations one one should be careful about what uh, of uh, do uh, weary of doing uh, exercises like surya namaskar at a very early stage once the spine is strong enough then one can definitely embark on even surya namaskar or doing burpees or uh, doing jumping jacks and all those uh, exercises which which can be very beneficial but there is a time for all of these uh, uh, these exercises so uh, what i have done is kept it very simple that the most important thing more important than just focusing on a specific muscle of your spine general condition is of utmost importance i would say it is more important than just focusing on your back muscles or your abdomen muscles so general conditioning uh, three of the commonest ones out of which walking is the easiest if you anybody can do it anywhere um, i would recommend walking for 4 to 5 kilometers in 40 to 50 minutes every day at least 6 days a week now what happens with uh, walking or cycling or swimming is that it in one it it helps you in improving the vascularity of your muscles two it improves your exercise tolerance and your cardiac function three because of the uh, because of uh, optimized conditioning you can even tolerate pain better four with general body conditioning your balance improves so that you you don't uh, you can uh, you can maintain yourself in uh, good uh, posture even in tricky situations so that you don't have unnecessary falls so all these benefits are there with doing general body conditioning exercises cycling i would recommend for about 30 minutes continuous cycling every day if if not walking ideally it would be very good to uh, to walk for 10 minutes cycle for another 10 minutes and swim for about 20 minutes and that would really uh, you know cover all the muscles of the body so coming to the the most basic of exercises what we call as an elbow plank now that is an excellent exercise for uh, for building your core muscles as you can see here it's not only the back muscles which are kept taut but even the abdomen muscles the gluteal muscles the the leg muscles your arms are all taut even the neck muscles get exercised with a plank this is an isometric exercise that is you are maintaining the tone or uh, you are uh, maintaining the length of the muscle but increasing the tone of the muscle so by keep putting it into contraction for a prolonged duration of time now this gives overall muscle strengthening and it's invaluable i would say the whole uh, it's more important to have uh, good uh, trunk and core muscle strength than to have better biceps yes biceps helps you in getting work done around the house but uh, core muscles are what keeps you upright helps you maintain good posture helps you in walking trekking and doing all kinds of uh, outdoor physical activities it helps you in moving geriat in the geriatric population it helps in moving oneself from uh, lying down to a sitting position sitting to a standing position every movement depends on our core muscle strength and if we if we ignore our core muscle strength then we will find it very difficult to do our day to day functioning so a plank exercise is an excellent way of uh, working out uh, for anybody it does not cause any harm you're not moving the spine you're only tightening the muscles around the spine even post surgically a patient can just as he is lying down he just when he wakes up in the morning he can just uh, go on his belly go on the elbow and leg on the bed itself on which he's been sleeping hold that position for uh, 30 seconds do it 
uh, in different uh, in 30 30 30 maybe about 10 times you would have covered uh, like five minutes of uh, plank and gradually increase the time duration of the plank exercise so if you can do uh, hold a plank position, elbow plank position for say one to two minutes that's very good and uh, if you if you work on it and finally do a plank uh, session of about 10 minutes that's like really awesome so and it's very simple it's not damaging it won't hurt your joints it will not move the disc if you're worried about the disc popping out again after the surgery it won't uh, lead to any such situation it's a natural position you're just lifting yourself up from the or from your mattress that's all it's i i have not seen a more effective uh, exercise than a plank uh, position an elbow plank position so i would strongly recommend that to most all patients actually yeah so the second uh, important good exercise that can be done is to do your regular push-ups now push-up exercise once you graduate from a plank position where your core strength has increased has improved you can go on to making it a little dynamic so once you can do about 10 minutes of plank in different batches then you go for push-ups that would further increase your upper body strength as well as your back because to hold your pelvis up while you're doing your uh, push-up exercises um, needs to needs uh, toning up of the muscles and that's exactly what happens to the paraspinal muscles so push-ups everybody knows you have to learn how to do the right push-ups uh, a word of caution here that if there is any exercise which worsens your uh, pain or gives you a sharp kind of pain then you must give up that exercise for the time being till your condition improves your body is trying to tell you something so one shouldn't be stubborn and say no if i have to do my if i've decided on 10 reps of uh, push-ups and if you have a sharp kind of pain at five then you there's you shouldn't be too stubborn your body is trying to tell you something so go on to something easier like a plank which is equally effective the third simple exercise that we advocate to all is that of extending the spine like how you can see over there uh, you start with the prone position lying face down again you can do it in the morning when you wake up from bed before you get out of bed you can finish this workout like you just go on your elbow push yourself up and push it as posteriorly as possible so that you are your entire back from starting from the neck upper back lower back as well as the glutes and hamstrings get uh, get taught here now one of the concepts for muscle strengthening in any part of the body is a mind muscle connection that is even a simple exercise when you're doing a simple exercise you should think of those muscles and you should mentally strain those muscles when you do when you get this mind muscle connection that's when your muscle actually strains a little more and develops further this is scientifically established and uh, most people who work out on strengthen the muscle so mind muscle connection is very important another exercise is when you do when you when you're in a quadruped position that is knee and uh, knee and palm are in contact with the ground and then you lift say the left hand the left upper limb and the right lower limb so this is another exercise which is very simple the idea is not to do it very fast but to uh, do uh, to hold this position for as long as you want what i recommend is you hold this position for about 10 to 15 seconds and then switch over to the opposite side so it's like a cross body extension if it's the left upper limb then it, uh, the left lower limb goes up this is excellent for the core muscles of the back as well as glutes 
hamstrings as well as the abdomen. So as I said, think about the muscle and do the exercise. Every, every exercise that I'm describing is something which is done very slowly. There's nothing that is done in a very bouncy manner or uh, uh, in a rapid fashion. Every, every exercise is done in a controlled manner so that there is no disturbance to your balance or equilibrium but equally effective as doing any kind of a weight training or heavy running. One doesn't need to really run to get strong back muscles. One needs to do controlled, purposeful movements for muscle building. Having said that, uh, at this point, let me add that it's good, it's necessary to have good nutrition, nutritious intake. Protein intake has to be optimized. Any person who's trying to strengthen his muscles for uh, good health of, uh, and uh, uh, of uh, health of his spine needs to be taking proper, having proper protein intake. Be aware of your nutrition. Make sure that you get about 0.8 to 1 gram uh, of protein per kg of body weight. That is if you're 70 kilos, try and get 70 grams of, uh, of protein into you. And now it's pretty easy to calculate. You can weigh what you eat, put it in an app, and see the amount of protein that uh, uh, that that you need to uh, be uh, that you're actually getting out of that uh, particular food product. This is the um, uh, I, I see that somebody has raised their hand, but uh, I'll answer that question in the end once I'm almost coming towards the end of my presentation in another five minutes, and then we can freely discuss. Uh, so uh, this is another uh, exercise, which is a bridge exercise. As you can see, you can lift your, uh, be on your, keep your foot planted firmly on the ground and shoulder on the ground and lift your pelvis up. Similarly, you can do a next extreme kind of a, uh, the next level of exercise, not extreme, but the next level of exercise where you keep your foot on a bench and lift the pelvis up. If, if you're uh, a more fit person, you can engage in this kind of an uh, exercise activity. Uh, the next level of exercise is that of lifting both your hands and legs up while lying only on the elbow, uh, on the belly and the pelvis with the face down. So this is again a very effective exercise. Instead of doing it on the floor, you can use a Swiss ball, and uh, uh, which which is very convenient, soft, uh, more uh, user friendly, and you don't need to really be on the ground to do these exercises. You can ease yourself onto a Swiss ball and uh, get down to doing back exercises. If you're in a gym and you have an apparatus which uh, helps you in maintaining a position where you can be obliquely positioned and uh, bend forward and lift yourself up as depicted in this exercise in this uh, picture in front of you that is a very effective way of doing slow controlled put mind to muscle connect the two feel the muscle contracting repeat it at least 10 times in every set you can do up to 30, 40, 50 uh, repetitions in the morning, 50 in the evening. These are very controlled, they do minimum uh, damage. You just need to be sure that you do it in a slow, controlled manner. Um, you can use some weights and do these simple exercises. And if you have a spine problem, I would advise you not to use weights. If you want to use weights, use very low weights, one or two kilos, but and do them properly. Uh, here leaning forward and lifting the weights uh, away from the body sideways will help you in building the muscles around the wing muscles in the upper back. The wing bone, the scapula, which is in the upper back, the muscles around it get uh, strengthened with this. And uh, this exercise is to strengthen your lats, the, wing, uh, the, the wings on the side. Yeah. So a lot of uh, talk about yoga. Uh, yes, I, I, for, for people who have spine problems, which uh, like slip disc or infections or tumors of the spine, definitely don't do a standing and bending forward kind of exercise. But these horizontal exercises, which have been described centuries ago uh, uh, in uh, in yoga, has, has is very very effective 
and uh, very useful. I recommend all these exercises for my patients as long as it's done in a slow and controlled manner and that basically is the essence of, uh, of uh, yoga. So uh, a lot of uh, cat camel stretches, glute bridges or uh, swimming pose or the child pose, all of them are good for flexibility as well as strengthening and maintaining good posture of the spine. So exercise, uh, low stress aerobic exercise in a controlled manner can prevent deliberate, uh, debilitation due to inactivity during the first month of symptoms and this can be started in the first two weeks after onset of acute low back pain. Con uh, conditioning exercises for trunk muscles are helpful with uh, patients who have acute problem, particularly if symptoms persist but may aggravate symptoms more than aerobic exercise in the first two months. There is no evidence to say that back specific machines, any high tech machines provide benefit over the traditional exercises. This is a very important point. It's not that you need to buy something and apply it to you as in exercise form for you to get good uh, spine health. No, you can do it without any equipment. It's just the posture that you maintain and the way you do the, the way you contract the muscles in a controlled manner. The guidelines suggest that there is gradually increasing exercise quota results in better outcomes than telling people to stop exercise while if pain occurs. Meaning to say, they are not saying that if there is a sharp pain, you continue exercising. What they say is that if there is mild pain, please do a little bit of exercise and gradually increase it as the pain is gone. There are other guidelines which recommend that supervised exercises as a first line of treatment for chronic back pain is what is recommended. They say that there is no recommendation of a specific kind of exercise. It's not that you have to do yoga or you have to do uh, uh, planks. There are exercises which you are familiar with, which you can manage to do, which you can do. There is no one way of uh, doing exercise. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I hope all of you uh, benefited from this uh, small presentation. Uh, which I felt was uh, necessary uh, in the, for uh, spine health. I'm, uh, I'll be looking at the questions. Any questions for the chat box? For the chat box. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Is uh, one question from uh, Mahantesh Kanabur. That is, uh, is cycling good or bad for back pain? Now that's a very good question. Cycling is one of the safest and best ways of uh, exercising and body conditioning. It's very good for the back. What I suggest is to use stationary cycle where you're just sitting where uh, forces of uh, external uh, influences are not disturbing your cycling. Uh, so I would recommend cycling in the gym in an exercise cycle so that you can increase the grade of the level of uh, resistance that is there and that can be very good for uh, your spine because you have to do it uh, sitting vertically. Next question, I do regular exercise and still get don't get to see any improvement on low back pain. What should be the next step? So uh, yeah, if the pain doesn't improve, then we have to find what the pain generator is is it coming from the muscle is it from a facet joint is it coming from the bone uh, we'll have to look into all that is there a small spondylolysis or a break in the spine which which could be leading to uh, the pain so we we'll need an x-ray evaluation and mri evaluation if required or if uh, we feel that it is metabolic then we'll have to look at vitamin d levels or look for other uh, uh, metabolic profiles, rheumatoid arthritis, immune system related problems. But then if it is a small niggle, then it's most probably muscular. There may be some fibrotic bands or some old injury which has happened, which is just failing to heal. Maybe a few days of rest and some anti-inflammatory medications should help you. Uh, can you please suggest any neck exercises? Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Now, planks actually help in uh, uh, in uh, even strengthening the neck. But for neck, 
um, uh, interestingly, I do not recommend that people move their neck like a rotation activity of the neck. I don't uh, recommend that because many of them have, many of my patients have uh, tight spinal canals where there's very less space for the nerves and in such situations or too much of rotation and manipulation of the neck can lead to weakness in the hands and legs. So what I suggest is isometric exercises. I will, since I have not shown it uh, on uh, in my presentation, I will demonstrate it to you. All you have to do is make the entire exercise is done in a neutral position where your head is in head and neck are in neutral position. Offer resistance and push your head forward with resistance from the hand. Hold it there for five seconds and then relax for five seconds and then repeat it again. Do it 25 times every day, if possible, 25 times in the morning and 25 times in the evening. Uh, second exercise is to do the same thing, pushing backwards. Hold it there for five seconds and relax for five seconds. Repeat it 25 times. Similarly, sideways, push, offer resistance, hold for five seconds and relax for five seconds. Uh, and then the opposite side again, five seconds. Hold and release. And also take weights in your hand, depending on your ability. 3, 4, 5 kilos, lift it up and down. Do it 25 times every day. Yeah. And so now we are talking about the neck. I would suggest that you maintain good posture of the neck. Make sure that you are not having a poking chin posture. Always tuck your chin back. Keep your chin tucked inside. Don't keep it this way. Don't let your shoulders droop down. Make sure that you use arm rest, arm support. Sit back this way. When you drive, Make sure that your headrest and the head are in contact. There are two two benefits of that, and that is one is if you there is a sudden jerk, your head doesn't go forward and then go backwards completely. That can be damaging to the spine. There are catastrophic events that have happened because of that simple problem. And the second is that it gives some support for the neck muscles on a long drive. Uh, next exercise, uh, can we see yes, back pain traversing to the leg at times? Is it a serious problem by S.S. Shetty? Uh, okay, so that's um, uh, whenever, a pa whenever a patient has pain which is shooting down the leg, it means that there is a compression of the nerve in the spine. And usually in a young person, it's a slip disc where there is a disc which has uh, bulged out and is squeezing the nerve. And that mean that 99% uh, of the time it's not a serious problem, but it needs to be attended to. It's not something to be neglected. There are medications for it and uh, a little bit of rest and uh, correction of certain postures and then you should be fine. If a person has uh, pain shooting down the leg along with weakness in the foot and numbness, and difficulty in passing urine, now controlling urine, now that's a serious problem. That needs an emergency surgery. In the elderly, when there is pain going down the leg, it could be because of wear and tear of the joints or it could be any of the many problems that can happen in the spine. So anybody who's above the age of 50, 55 needs to be, needs to visit, uh, consult a specialist as early as possible. Not that you need to panic, but it's better to at least screen the spine with an X-ray and make sure that it's not nothing more than just a usual simple slip disc. Um, there was, um, if I have back pain, what should I do to reduce it? Yeah, so uh, that's a good question uh, by Rajneesh. Now, if you have back pain, there could be many causes. We'll have to identify what the cause is before we say that it's just muscular pain. There are, there are many things. And a specialist can do it without doing any investigations. There are ways in which a, special, a spine specialist would uh, understand your problem without doing MRIs or blood tests or, and do only those necessary tests. So uh, consult the specialist and, uh, and then find out what the pain generator is. And based on that, Treat, uh, treat the problem. It could be treated with exercises or with some medications or with some, uh, sometimes even physiotherapy, yes. Uh, Kavita says, what, ask, what, hi doctor, what 
exercise or treatment you suggest for pain in the tailbone and pain also passes to the left ankle when seated for two hours. Yeah, so tailbone is what we call as coccydynia uh, because the tailbone or the coccyx is the lowermost part of the spine and that can get um, uh, damaged, fractured because it is a free, uh, it's not uh, connected to anything else, it's sitting freely projecting down from the sacrum it can crack because of a sudden fall usually they uh, people come after falling from the stairs you know bumping down the stairs uh, but at times i've seen people have these kind of cracks even when they have had sudden loss of weight and they lose the mass muscle mass over the gluteal areas uh, they they also have more pressure falling on directly on the bone and it can crack or people who have osteoporosis weak bones can fracture it spontaneously with small impacts like a bump or during while going on a two-wheeler also and that uh, settles down by itself when there are tail there is tailbone pain if it doesn't settle down then we do give some steroid injections around this uh, around the coccyx and that should help it in very extreme cases they, we even operate on the coccyx and we remove the coccyx if, if it is too painful. In some individuals who can't even sit because of uh, uh, because of the pain in the tailbone. So next question, uh, Mr. Muttu Krishna says there is a saying that bone friction happens when we grow older. Is that true? Um, that's the first time I'm uh, hearing the word bo the term bone friction. Uh, I, if you mean bone fracture, if it's a typo error, yes, more uh, fractures of the bone happen with uh, with osteoporosis, which happens with aging. If you mean by friction, wear and tear of the joint, yes. If you mean wear and tear of the joint, then that, that can happen with aging. And it's not decided by the kind of activity that we do or what we eat. It is purely a a predisposition of an individual genetically to early wear and tear. So that, that's a, a very common question that people ask me, doctor, why has this uh, joint of mine worn out? It has not happened to my mother or it's not happened to my friends who are much older to me, but why has this disc worn out? Why has the joint worn out? What we do know is that there is a certain amount of genetic predisposition to this. Our body is programmed that way that some people may have wear and tear of their knee joints or their spine early, but they may never develop a cataract, whereas some others may develop a cataract at, a, at the age of 40, while they don't have uh, even one gray hair on their scalp till they are 70. So uh, different parts of our body uh, wear uh, at different paces. Uh, next question. Uh, is there any good exercise for fat burn? Now, I think I'll stay away from that uh, question from Anup. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, I mean, I think we'll stick to the back pain uh, uh, topic. Any suggestions to for people sitting in office for long hours? Yeah, always maintain proper posture. Sit, use a back support. Don't sit, uh, sit on a chair which has a back support. Keep a small rolled uh, pillow or a sheet, uh, a cloth, towel behind your lower back so that the curve of the back is maintained. Um, if you're sitting for long hours, make sure you get up from your seat at least every half an hour or 45 minutes, walk around and, uh, and, and then come back. Do your back strengthening exercises, the ones which were demonstrated. It's very easy. You don't need space to run. You just need three by six feet area and uh, some privacy and you can do your uh, back strengthening exercises. Doing two or five minutes of back strengthening every three, four hours, if you're having a very you know monotonous working day, you can break that monotony with some back exercise and it will help you big time. Uh, next question by Dr. Maya Maskrinas. These days, all are sitting down because of online classes, young children. How can they prevent uh, posture issues? Yeah, so uh, that's, that's a good question. Usually, children are very resilient to pain. I, I, alarm bells ring in my mind as to why should a small child have back pain? So if 
there is a very young child, say a five year old or eight or ten year old, who says back pain, then we need to investigate. We need to get at least an x ray to look for some kind of congenital anomalies. Children, you'll be surprised how, how uh, plastic their muscles are, how, how resistant they are to uh, stresses and strains that uh, it's very unusual. But yes, for children, again, now uh, you, they should be allowed to play outdoors as much as possible or indoors or at least engage them in some kind of uh, conditioning exercise like uh, um, a dance session for half an hour so that all their muscles are toned up and uh, you know optimized if they are only having online classes and not going out to play they they can uh, over three to five months they can definitely have poorer uh, muscle mass and muscle growth muscle strength compared to what they would have been if they were not uh, confined to their home so yeah let them do something fun even inside the house like uh, a dance session for half an hour or 45 minutes and that should help them in, in strengthening their muscles uh, how next question is how to distinguish muscle pain and real bone issue in case of back pain uh, which comes from any kind of sports that's a that's a good question so a pain which is very sharp with with any movement of the spine and at times even every time you cough or breathe inhale or exhale deeply if you have a sharp kind of pain now that's something which you have to uh, consider think that it is not just muscular and if the person is having rest pain whenever a person is lying still in on the bed not doing anything horizontal position and still having pain now that could be something else other than just muscular because essentially muscular or mechanical problems or problems which are because of load being subjected on the spine need are are, are not that dangerous they, it could be muscular or it could be something very simple like a small slip disc or annular tear but if there is rest pain then it could mean uh, so many things to us like commonly we think of infection we like to rule out infections and tumors of the spine when a person says they have rest pain so rest pain is a very important feature another important feature is whether the back pain is associated with fever or weight loss or loss of appetite now that is a red flag there are certain red flags and this is one of them if you are having back pain along with uh, fever weight loss loss of appetite you need to see a specialist and you need some basic investigations blood tests and x-ray or maybe even an mri to be done yeah so that's a uh, that's a very good question uh, again uh, another question are squats bad for the back good question so I would suggest that I, squats are not bad for the back and neither are deadlifts. Okay, actually, for a person who doesn't have a spine problem, it's okay to do low back strengthening, even go to the gym and do deadlifts, but provided it's done in a controlled fashion under supervision. Squats are very good for the core muscles. Start with half squats, keep a low stool and just sit and get up, sit and get up. Start that way and then get on down to full squats. Perfectly fine as long as it's done in a controlled manner. Now, if you are post-surgery, if you are already having a compromised spine, like we have removed the disc or been operated for a spine fracture or TB of the spine where pus and bacteria have eaten up the bones of the spine, in such a scenario, definitely doing a half squat is still okay still okay even in those conditions but definitely not deadlifts or full squats or twisting actions of the spine where uh, you know if there are screws which are put in the spine which are which is into very soft bones not hard bones then it can lead to some amount of uh, toggle and loosening of the implants if your luck is not good or if you're you know so better to avoid Planks are the best form of exercise when in doubt and you can effectively improve your back muscles and your core muscles just by doing simple planks. You don't really need to uh, you 
know, venture into heavy duty exercises. And it can be done, you know, in a very natural position, you know, lying down position. You wake up in the morning and you do a plank, session of planks in bed and only then get out of bed. Job done. So, uh, any more questions? Muscle store emotional memory. Chronic pain do have emotional connection. Yes, Dr. Jay Surya. Yes. That's the that's a very uh, relevant concept that you have uh, brought up. Uh, that's what that's what we call as central sensitization. So a person has back pain. It may be a simple muscular back pain, but if it lasts for a long time, what happens is, to put in layman's terms, more neurons in the brain are recruited by uh, by the body to sense pain. A pretty useless and mischievous uh, process happening in our brain. So there is an amplification of pain. So the memory of the pain actually gives you more perception of pain and many of the individuals who have anxiety disorders can be susceptible to undue amplification of pain. That is central sensitization and for such individuals with chronic pain there are central desensitizers like amitriptyline or many other medications which help in decreasing the amplification and which is important because the, once the person who is anxious gets some pain relief, they are more encouraged, optimistic and then there is a chance that they can fight the back pain and restore their spine health. Yeah, so uh, how to distinguish? So I hope that answers your question. I think I have answered most of the questions. Yeah, I hope uh, I have not uh, missed out on anybody's questions. And I think I, I, I enjoyed uh, conducting this session. I hope all of you enjoyed it too. Uh, thank you one and all for joining in. And uh, you can please uh, connect with us if you have any more doubts. And we'll be happy to answer to all your queries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Thanks all of you for participating in this session. Anything related to the doubts, just go to Mr. Shanmugam and can be present in Mr. Shanmugam for any appointment and clarifications. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.